three, two, one. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop here today and it's another day we're going back to school. Right, we have four weapons that we're going to look at today. The first is an 860 pound crossbow, windless crossbow, uh, made by myself. Uh, a good effective weapon, very 15th century sort of thing that was used uh, either on the battlefield by continental armies or siege warfare, um, either shooting into, into or out of a castle by, by the English and other continent and the continental armies as well. So the English did use crossbows, don't think it was all about longbows. Uh, so we've got a bolt there that weighs in at, I think it was 87 grams. We've got a uh, 95 pound uh, U, uh, Italian U-stave longbow by Joe Gibbs. Uh, that is shooting a 42 gram arrow, I think it is. Uh, then we have got a uh, compound bow by PSE, I think. I don't know the brand, but it's something I picked up in the States a few years ago. Um, shoots quite nicely, and that is shooting 34 grams. And then the last one is, uh, this is a Chinese, uh, Chinese compound bow by Jin Dao, I think, Jan, Jan Dao. 175 pounds, uh, works quite nicely. I think it's about 330 FPS or something. We'll find out, I guess, shortly. Um, but shoots very fast. Uh, and that one is shooting a 29 gram arrow. So what we're gonna do is just uh, shoot them all into a block of j ballistic gel. Uh, and see what happens. And then we'll have a look at the maths. <clears throat> so first up we have a windless crossbow drawing 860 pounds. So I'll just span that for you and then shoot it. I'm going to do it at point blank really. Um, with some luck I'm not going to end up hitting previous projectiles because uh, that would be tedious. So just winding it up, doesn't take too long. That's now spanned. So I'm just undoing the cords because otherwise if you do it later, the next shot, it all gets a little bit tangled. So it's easier to do it at the beginning. And then we have a bolt. Well, that went in. <coughs> Zoom in, see if we can see that. So that is, oh, is it gonna focus? Yeah, okay. It's not, it's not wanting to focus, but basically it's 155.7. So basically 156 feet per second. Bit of a slow tank, that one. Right. Oops. Then next up we have got a 95 pound uh, U longbow by Joe Gibbs, shot by not the world's best archer, but uh, Let's just see. So that one's in. So next up uh, is a 75 pound compound bow by PSE. Like I said, don't know them. Um, I literally dusted this down because I haven't shot it for uh, a couple of years, I think at least. Um, so let's, uh, I'm gonna try and hit somewhere. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to say actually, the speed on that longbow, 139 feet per second. Right, unfortunately that compound arrow, maybe it clips the chrono or something, it's come up with an arrow reading. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I don't wanna move anything there on the gel block, so I'm gonna leave that where it is and I'll do the last arrow test, uh, crossbow bolt test, and then I will come back and I'll take a speed test separately uh, on the compound bow arrow. So last up is a 175 pound compound crossbow by a Chinese company called Jan Dao. Um, shoots fairly fast. Uh, let's see how it does. It's a beast to cock. Well, that has come through at 
310. Let's just see if we can zoom in on that. No, it's, it's not. Uh, yeah, there you go. So that's come through at 310 feet per second. Uh, and in fact, uh, you may have detected from the sound, it's gone through the block. Right, so this is what's happened to our block of uh, ballistic gel. So it looks to be about uh, 10 or 11 inches, so uh, 22, uh, 20, 22 centimetres wide, deep even. So what we've got here, that is a long bow, uh, compound bow shaft. Goes in, it's about 10 millimetre diameter, and it comes out uh, just to here, so it comes out about uh, eight, nine millimetre, uh, centimetres here. Then we've got the crossbow bolt. Um, obviously you can see there that actually even the fletches themselves would do significant damage. They've gone in uh, three to four inches, um, nearly 100 millimetres into the block of ballistic gel. So I mean those, uh, the fletches themselves would make quite a mess of you. And then we're coming through at the other end, maybe about 30, 40 millimetres out uh, the, the back face of the block here. Um, then we've got the, uh, the longbow shaft here. It's coming in and it stops, uh, again, about 30, 40, 40 millimetres from the, black at the back of the block. So again, that would be um, pretty unpleasant to get hit by. But of course, the star of the show, which is perhaps unexpected, uh, expected, is the uh, compound bow. So that went straight through the block. And actually you can see there's a wooden, wooden wall behind here. Uh, it actually bounced off that. Um, so to be honest, uh, if that wooden wall had not been there, that bolt would have gone clean through. Um, now again, you know, the scientists in you and the, and the ballistic gel geeks are gonna be saying, well, it's all fractured in there and it's been shot before and all that. Yes, it has. This is not a scientific experiment. Uh, it, it's just me messing about and having a look at comparators just to get some kind of an idea of what's going on. So let's go look at the maths. Right, bow geeks. Uh, here is some surprising numbers for you. Name of the bow, draw weight, arrow weight, feet per second, converted to meters per second, because that's what I do. Mass times velocity. Velocity, obviously, in meters per second. Mass in uh, kilograms. So again, you've got to convert the, the grams into kilograms, but you just put a point and zero in front of it and that's fine. And then just for the hell of it, I've done energy at the end using half MV squared. Again, obviously using um, uh, SI units. And so I've ended up with joules as the energy numbers. Now, uh, if we go back to looking at the block of gelatin, now obviously the compound crossbow bolt went, uh, it went clean through. Um, far, far better than anything else. Now, if you look at the numbers here, the momentum, which is traditionally what is supposed to um, deal with penetration, uh, the momentum is 4.2 on the 860 pound crossbow, 2.74 on the compound crossbow. So you'd think that the, the oldie worldy bow would penetrate much better. Now, it hasn't. Now, the bolt is, is a lot fatter, so you've got more surface area to drag through. It's got the fletches on it that don't deform out of the way like they do on the um, sort of plasticky ones on the compound bow. So that may well have something to do with it as well. Um, but the bottom line is if you're expecting uh, some answers out of this video, you're not going to get them actually because the, the numbers are not really making sense. But what's nice about this is it gives us all something to talk about. Um, so please throw your comments in, your ideas. Let's get a discussion going because uh, these numbers are, yeah, a little bit odd. So just cracking down. Um, Momentum on the compound bow, 2.74. On the compound crossbow, 2.74. Momentum on the compound bow, 2.19. And a very shoddy 1.82 on my longbow. So um, it's looking, with 38.7 joules, my longbow is looking rather tired, actually. It's probably time I got another one. Uh, but I like it, so. Um, but yeah, so the energy is much higher. The energy is much higher on the compound crossbow. And actually, that is around about, from memory, around about the same energy level as a 2-2 long rifle round. Um, this one is, you know, reasonably significantly, what, 80% of it. Uh, but the momentum's a lot higher. Um, and interestingly as well, the, the fletches of the wooden fletch bolts, they cut right in about four inches. So, I mean, that would really mess up your day even more than getting a 13 mil half-inch hole poked through you. You know, getting a slit on either side, but it's not going to work too nicely either. 
Um, so really, no answers have come out of this, I'm afraid to say. Uh, it would be lovely if I could say some definitive thing like, and therefore, this bow is better. Um, I haven't. I think what you can say is that when you go deer hunting or, or boar hunting or whatever it is, um, you take a compound bow, not a windless crossbow. Uh, and there's probably some good reasons for that, as evidenced by a bit of paper. Uh, so thank you very much and I hope you, hope you learned something. Like I said at the beginning, there's another video where I deal with all of the impact energies uh, of these bows and I talk about that and um, the efficiencies of, of the different materials and things. So there's a lot more material in that one as well about a similar subject area. So yeah, go check it out. And if you like the channel, then subscribe, please do. All right, thank you. Uh, right, so for a last and utterly pointless test, we'll do the compound crossbow and the windlass crossbow against my clipboard here, which happens to be a bit of 16th inch um, uh, 1.6mm aluminium. Not steel, so don't write in and tell me it's not steel, it's not steel. Uh, we'll just shoot it, see what happens. Don't really know what that proves, it was just something to do on an afternoon. <laughs>